The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft quality foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip is a unique type of salad dressing combining the best qualities of old-fashioned boil dressing and fine mayonnaise. Made from a secret Kraft recipe, delightful Miracle Whip gives you a lively, different flavor you'll find in no other salad dressing. Let zesty, smooth-as-satin Miracle Whip help you to real salad success. Try it tomorrow and see for yourself why Miracle Whip is America's favorite salad dressing. Well, last week, the great Gildersleeve's niece, Marjorie, was married to Bronco Thompson, and the happy pair departed immediately on their honeymoon. As the great man will testify, it was quite a wedding. You bet. I'm still shaking rice out of my shoes. <laughs> and since the current issue of Look Magazine has pictures of the ceremony, the water commissioner now settles himself in his easy chair, magazine in hand, to relive that joyous event. <sighs> yes, sir, I managed the whole wedding single-handed. But there's a lot of it I don't remember. The driver of a car never gets to look at the scenery. Have <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you got the magazine? Oh, uh, yes, my boy. I suppose you want to look at the wedding pictures. No, I've seen them already. I want to show you something else. Look here. Yeah, I'll bet I know what's coming. Find the seven faces in this picture and win a Shetland pony. <laughs> no, better than that even. Oh? Uh? Here, look at that. Oop, a boy dressed in fish. What a picture. Yeah, he's got strings of fish all around him. He's wearing them like a suit. Keen, huh? <laughs> Double-breasted halibut. <laughs> Those aren't halibut. They're not. Those are bass. Boy, what I wouldn't give to catch fish like that. Can we go fishing, Unc? Fishing? Well, let's do one thing at a time, my boy. We've just finished Marjorie's wedding. Okay, she caught her fish. Yes. <laughs> now let me catch one. Silly Ron. Can we go, Unc? It's good for a little kid to go fishing. It's good for him to get outdoors. Yes, yes. The fish are biting out at Grass Lake. Tomorrow's Saturday. Can we go tomorrow, can we, Unc? All right, Leroy. I'll take you fishing at Grass Lake, but not tomorrow. We'll go next Saturday. Oh, boy, keen, Unc. You there, Mr. Gill, please? Mm-hmm. In the parlor, Bertie. Here's the mail that came today. There's a letter from Miss Marjorie. A letter from Marjorie? Well, from Honeysuckle Lodge. Wonder how the lovebirds are getting along. Probably just sitting, smelling the honeysuckle. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what Marjorie has to say here. Dear Unky and all, isn't that sweet? Little Marjorie. Dear Unky and all, words cannot express how happy I am. Bronco and I have a lovely room overlooking the lake. I wonder if there's any fish in it. Yeah. <laughs> in the room? Oh, my goodness. Go fish in the backyard, Leroy. Listen to the letter, Leroy. Okay. See, Bronco and I have a lovely room overlooking the lake, and it's all like a beautiful dream. I'm sure no girl was ever so much in love with her husband. Bless her little heart. Why don't they fish? Leroy. <laughs> I feel as if the whole world were ours, and there was nobody but just Bronco and me. At night, when the stars are out, we walk by the shores of the lake. You can fish at night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hand in hand, we walk and count the stars, and I know I'm in heaven. I must be. I'll write more later. Give my best to little Leroy, to Bertie and Judge Hooker, and to Catherine Milford when you see her. Your loving niece, Marjorie. That was a nice letter. Yeah, Marjorie's so happy. <sighs> Love is a wonderful thing. I'd rather catch a bass. <laughs> you, Roy, you and your fish. Hey, Uncle, what's doing with you and Miss Milford? Did she give you the gate? Give me the gate? 
Certainly not. In fact, I was just thinking about Miss Milford. Like Miss Marjorie said, love is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, baby, Marjorie's letter had nothing to do with it. How come Miss Milford hasn't been around, Donkey? Well, I've been busy the last few days, my boy. She's probably been busy, too, over at the hospital. Yeah, making goo-goo eyes at that Dr. Olson. <laughs> goo-goo eyes. Leroy, stop being so silly. Dr. Olson is out of the picture. I left him in the dust long ago. Yeah, I saw him walking down the street with her yesterday. He didn't look very dusty to me. <laughs> Why don't you go out and play, Leroy? I'm playing in here. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my hat, Bertie? You going out, Mr. Gilfley? Yeah, I think I'll run over to Miss Milford's for a few minutes. Worried, Unc? No, Leroy. What a household. A man has about as much privacy here as a goldfish. What kind of fish? Never mind! <laughs> Catherine's mother doesn't answer the door. She'd think I brought this rose for her. <laughs> Leroy with his silly ideas about that Dr. Olson. Catherine's probably standing behind the door right now, waiting for me to ring the bell. Kiki Katie, beautiful KP. Hmm, lovely rose. Oop, bug. <laughs> You're the only Kiki girl that I adore. Here she comes. Yes? Zeke, Dr. Olson. Oh, it's you, Gildersleeve. Yeah, I haven't seen you in quite a while. Yes, it has been quite a while. Well, there's something I can do for you, Gildersleeve. What? Somebody at the door? No, just some fellow from the water department. Oh, now look here, Olson. Oh, Rockmore. Yeah, it's me. Hello, Catherine. Come in. Thank you. One side, Olson. Where have you been, Throckmorton? Where have I been? Well, um, everything's been kind of upset at our house with the wedding and all. Oh, you married Gildersleeve? Well, congratulations. Uh, no, Dr. Olson, let go of my hand. It was my niece. Oh. Yeah. Well, I don't know why we're all standing here in the hallway. Yeah, it is kind of crowded. Aren't you needed at the hospital, doctor? Emergency operation or something? <laughs> no, I'm not on call today. You're not, eh? <laughs> Dr. Olson is taking me out to dinner tonight, Throckmorton He is? Yes, I'd ask you to go along, Gildersleeve But the people we're going with are all, well, professional people Now, just a minute, Olson uh, Gildersleeve, stop shaking that rose in my face Rose? Was that for me, Throckmorton? Oh, yeah, but I almost gave it to him <laughs> uh, You better take it outside, Catherine It has aphis on it Aphis? <laughs> Catherine, but I came by to ask you, will you have dinner with me tomorrow? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tomorrow. I'm going out to Grass Lake. Grass Lake? Uh-huh. With Dr. Olson. Oh. <laughs> Maybe some other time, Throckmorton. Yeah. Some other time. <laughs> Sneaking in, trying to beat my time the minute my back is turned. Taking Catherine to Grass Lake tomorrow. Well, let her go. It isn't going to bother me one bit. You home, Miss Gilkley? Yeah, I'm home, Bertie. Miss Gilkley, you ought to see what Leroy's doing. Yeah, well, tell me about it later, Bertie. I've got a lot of important things in my mind. Yes, sir. You know what he's doing, Miss Gilkley? No, Bertie. He's out there fishing in the wash tub. Oh, fishing in the wash tub. He's having a big time. Yeah, all right, Bertie. I'm trying to think. Fishing in the wash tub. Yes, Bertie. He ain't gonna catch nothing. I know, Bertie. There ain't no fish in that wash tub. That's right. <laughs> but he's fishing. <laughs> Uh, what a household. That sneaky Dr. Olson. Probably taking Catherine out to Grass Lake tomorrow for a picnic. Hm. Wonder what they're going to do out there. Not that I care. Look at here, Unc. I got my fishing line all rigged up. Well, good. I've been trying it out in the wash tub. I caught a sock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can hardly wait for next Saturday at Grass Lake. Next Saturday? Say, if Catherine and Dr. Olson are going to be... Leroy, I just thought of something. Yeah? Come to think of it, we might go to Grass Lake tomorrow, after all. Tomorrow? Certainly. 
That's when you wanted to go, wasn't it? Yeah, but I already told Piggy I'd go to the show with him tomorrow. Well, tell Piggy you'll go with him next week. Why are we all of a sudden going to Grass Lake tomorrow? Well, uh, because it's a better day. There's bound to be more fish in the lake tomorrow than next week. Will there? Sure. Bye, George. Tomorrow's just the time to go. Okay, Uncle, I'm all ready. I'm going to catch one of those fighting black bass. What are you going to catch, Unc? I'm going to catch a water snake. <laughs> <laughs> how the great Gildersleeve does in just a minute. The next time you give the family a main dish of leftovers, turn the meal into a feast by serving an extra delicious salad, perhaps a colorful fruit combination, topped with plenty of Miracle Whip salad dressing. Yes, ma'am, you just do that, and I wager you'll hear nothing but cheers, even from the men folks, because everyone goes for Miracle Whip's just right goodness. Not too sharp, not too mild. The one and only Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. It gives you just the tangy yet delicate flavor you want. Miracle Whip gives you just the texture you want, too. A wonderful, velvety smoothness that's made possible by a special craft beater. Get Miracle Whip when you shop tomorrow. And try the other craft salad dressings. There's craft mayonnaise, craft French dressing and Kraft Miracle French dressing. Grocers everywhere are featuring all the Kraft dressings in a big salad carnival this month. Visit your grocer's display. And for more wonderful new salad ideas, look in the May 22nd issue of Life magazine for the advertisement of Kraft Big Salad Carnival. Let's get back to the Great Gildersleeve. Uh, this is a free country. It's a public lake. No reason why Leroy and I can't go fishing at Grass Lake on the same day Catherine and that intern are there. It's just a coincidence. Cleverest coincidence I ever planned. <laughs> <laughs> Better stop in the drugstore and get some corks. Hello, PV. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this evening? Peavy, I want some bobbing corks. How's that? <laughs> corks, Peavy, the kind that tell you when the fish are biting. I don't think I have any corks that smart, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> All my corks know how to do is hold things in bottles. Yes. Yeah. All right, Peavy, just sell me a half a dozen large corks to tie on fishing lines. Going fishing, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, Peavy, up to Grass Lake. Very okay, well, I'll get my cork down. Well, that's a good idea. Are the fish biting? I don't know, Peavy. Well, are they going to bite? I don't know that either. <laughs> you don't seem any more interested in fishing than a couple of other people who are going up there tomorrow. What's this, Peavy? Nurse Milford and young Dr. Olson were just in discussing their plans over a soda. Well, I'm not the least bit interested in their plans, Peavy. What did they say? <laughs> Well, she said, I'll have a vanilla soda. Uh, Peavy, and... that's not the information I'm after. What were his plans? Well, he planned to have a strawberry soda. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. And then she bought a bathing cap. Bathing cap? It seems if it's warm enough, Miss Milford plans to try her new bathing suit. Zeke. And then the good doctor bought some suntan lotion. Yeah. I don't know why Dr. Olson needs suntan lotion with a hide as thick as his. Well, the doctor didn't buy it for himself. He said he might have to pat some on Miss Milford. That pushy intern, he'd better watch it. You care to take a bottle of the lotion along, Mr. Gildersleeve? PVI don't burn. <laughs> you look a little burned already. <laughs> what? If the fishing isn't good, you can always row ashore and join the picnickers. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have a bottle along in case the doctor runs out. Peavy, you know I wouldn't try to crash their party. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> give me a bottle. Leroy might get a sunburned nose. <laughs> What's the matter with 
me. I haven't been able to sleep all night. Mm. Wish this pillow was Dr. Olson. Uh, that left hook will hold him. Or maybe I can go to sleep. Uh, wonder how cozy that guy's getting with my nurse. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rebel, devil, devil, devil. There they are, sitting on the beach. Him and his bulging biceps. <laughs> uh, look at him covering her with sand. What a corny thing to do. Wonder what they're talking about. Your nose is getting pink, Catherine. Oh, I'd better put some suntan lotion on it. Nah, nah, you just leave all that to Dr. Olson. Well. Don't let him, Catherine. Now hold still. This won't hurt a bit. You mustn't let it burn. It's such a cute little nose. Oh, Doctor, you have such a pleasing bedside manner. Hey, he's not putting lotion on her nose. He's trying to kiss her. Catherine, darling. Yes, Doctor. Ooh, what nerve. Trying to kiss her on a public beach. I ought to call the police. There's the siren. Somebody beat me to it. Hey, turn off your alarm. Yeah. What's your fault? You folks. I got it. It's time to get up, huh? Leroy, who set my alarm for 5 o'clock? I did. It's time to go fishing. Fishing? At this ungodly hour? Sure. You aren't mad, are you, Unc? Well, no, my boy. At least he didn't get to kiss her. Kiss who? Never mind, Leroy. What a character. <laughs> More bacon and eggs, Mr. Gilsley? Well, just one more helping, Bertie. I haven't much of an appetite this early in the morning. No, sir. <laughs> I'll take anything he leaves, Bertie. All right, Leroy. He's just like his uncle. <laughs> okay. I'll get it, Bertie. I wonder who's going around ringing doorbells at this hour. Good morning, Gildy. Judge. What are you doing up so early? I always get up early. That's why I'm so sound of wind and limb. <laughs> An old goat up before the roosters. Now, Gildy, I happened to see a light in your house, so I came over. Judge, you can't see my lights from your house ten blocks away. Well, Peavy did tell me you and Leroy were going fishing this morning. Yeah, I knew it. And being an ardent fisherman... I happen to know all the best spots for fishing. Well, you don't happen to know what I'm fishing for. Oh, whether it's bass or bluegill, I know the spots to go. Now, Judge. Of course, I'm not inviting myself. Oh, no. Uh, just out for a walk. But I doubt if you'd ever find the right spots if I wasn't there to point them out. Judge, you can't go fishing in that cape you're wearing. Oh, the cape is removable, Gildy. See? Oh, for hip boots. Fishing jacket, landing net. And I just happened to bring my fishing rod. Oh? I was using it this morning for a walking stick. <laughs> yes, yes. Birdie, coddle an egg for the old judge. Now, Leroy. Mm. Heavy rowing. That's because you brought so much equipment along, Gildy. Even a ukulele. Yeah, what's the ukulele for, huh? Trying to catch a mermaid? <laughs> no, I think it's too cool for her to go in the water. I mean, <laughs> in case we go ashore and see somebody we know, they might want me to sing a song. And why the binoculars, Gildy? Well... Are the fish you catch so small, you need binoculars to see them? <laughs> all right, Judge. With all that wind, wouldn't you like to row for a little while? Thank you, Gildy, but I'm the navigator. Uh -huh. It's up to me to direct you to a good fishing spot. Look at that old goat standing up in the boat. Thinks he's Washington crossing the Delaware. <laughs> Sit down, Judge. Oops, I think I better... Oh, Gilday, you made me sit on the lunch. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake, now we're going to have pressed 
ham sandwiches. <laughs> all right, Leroy. Toss out the anchor. Here? Where all the people come? Surely. Surely you don't expect to catch fish right off the picnic ground. Why not? I wonder where they are. Gilday, why are you scanning the shore? Uh, shore? Uh, no reason, Judge. Uh, let's bait up and start fishing. Well, I'm just a guest, but if I had my way, we'd be fishing across the lake by those rocks. Yeah, over by the big stumps. There's a lot of bass over there. Well, Leroy, I know what I'm doing. I think I'll try casting. Low bridge. You're wasting your time, Gildy. You'll never catch a fish here. Well, it won't hurt to... Oop! Hey, there's something on your line, huh? Say, hey, there's somebody over there under a tree. I wonder if... No, Katie's a redhead. Gildy, what are you staring at? Reel him in. Uncle, your fish is going on into deep water. Uh, oh, yeah. Now you got him coming. Darn fish won't even let me see who's on shore. <laughs> That makes six for you, two for Leroy, and one for me. What a dull morning. Why do the fish have to pick on me? <laughs> I'll take them off the hook, huh? You can take my rod, too, Leroy. I think I'll relax and look through my binoculars a while. <laughs> I don't see him any place. Gilde, if you're looking for your nurse and young Dr. Olson, why not look behind you? What? Yeah. Here they come in a boat. See, it is Catherine. Well, imagine meeting her out here. Yeah, and Dr. Olson. Yes, yes. Hello there. Hello, Miss Melford. Dr. Olson. Catherine, what are you two doing out in the boat? We've been fishing. Catherine, you've been fishing? Yes, uh, fishing. Yeah. What's the matter with the doctor? Uh, I'm afraid Clarence doesn't feel very well. Seasick? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to shore, Catherine. Well, all right. Oh, oh. We didn't get a strike, Throckmorton. You didn't? Gosh, look at our string. Oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> Did you catch all those, Leroy? The heck no. The water commissioner caught most of them. Throckmorton, you did? Well, only six out of the nine. Oh, <laughs> Catherine, please, don't go to shore. The, the boat's rocking. <laughs> Clarence looks like a pale blue point oyster. Well, I guess we'd better go. Miss Melford, you seem to enjoy fishing. Oh, I do. Well, why don't you step into the boat with Gildy and Leroy and I will go ashore with the doctor? Why, John? Yeah, I'm getting hungry and I don't want to eat those sat on sandwiches. <laughs> well, you come with me, Leroy. I'll buy all the hot dogs you can eat. Hey, King! Have fun, Gildy. What a fine old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't mind, Clarence? Oh, no, I'd be happy to have someone row the boat. All I want to do is get on shore. <laughs> Hurry, Leroy. Okay. Yeah, careful, Leroy. Yeah. Let me take your hand, Catherine. Oh. Up the daisy. Oh. Thank you, Ralph Morton. This is going to be thrilling. You bet, thrilling. You take one oar, Leroy, and I'll take the other. Okay. So long, huh? Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye, Clarence. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Clarence doesn't feel like talking. <laughs> <sighs> now then, Throckmorton, I'm completely in your hands. You are? <laughs> How do I go about catching fish? Oh. Just drop my line over here? Well, uh, I think this little spot is kind of fished out. <laughs> Let's pull up anchor and drift over behind those willows. Whatever you say. <laughs> With my luck today, it wouldn't surprise me if I had a bass on the anchor. <laughs> now, we'll uh, just kind of let our lines drag behind the boat as we drift along. Oh, we're going to troll. Yeah. Uh, you handle the rods while I handle the ukulele. Ukulele? Mm-hmm. Oh, Throckmorton. Who ever heard of a fisherman playing a ukulele? Well, music has charms, even for fish. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine, imagine we're in a canoe floating on some tropical lagoon. Ah, oh, yes. 
come with me where moonbeams light to Hessian skies and the starlit waters linger in your eyes. Native hills are calling to them we belong while we cheer each other with our pagan love song. Well, I've never heard you sing so well, Throckmorton. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'll sit a little closer, kind of balance the boat. Oh. If I play my cards right, I may get that kiss the doctor missed. Catherine. Yes, Throckmorton. Catherine. Throckmorton, I've got a bite. Oh, those confounded fish. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. If spring fever's running high at your house, chances are you're hunting for some fresh menu ideas to fit in with that mood. Well, how about a cool, crisp, tossed salad of all your favorite greens? And to make that salad as tempting as can be, make it with plenty of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Wonderful Miracle Whip is made from a secret craft recipe for real flavor perfection. It has a just-right goodness, not too sharp, not too mild, that you won't get in any other salad dressing. Yes, Miracle Whip is really unique. Its lively, different taste just can't be copied. See for yourself why millions prefer it. Top your spring salads with America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, made by Kraft. Better get ready for dinner, Throckmorton. Oh, what's the hurry? I'd rather sit out here on the couch with you. But Judge Hooker has worked so hard in the kitchen. Well, he's having fun. It's the first time in years that he's cooked on more than one burner. <laughs> Wait, where's Dr. Oates? Oh, the dear doctor's folded up in the porch swing. Just proves, Catherine, when you're going out on the water, you need a water commissioner. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton. Catherine... Fish ready. I'll never catch another fish as long as I live. <laughs> the Great Builder Sleeve is played by Harold Perry. This show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Emily White with music by Jack Neeson. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Builder Sleeve. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Now join the excitement of Break the Bank.